Good morning, everybody. It's another dye experiment. Today we are doing dye blankets. I have been hoarding these in my fridge instead of food uh, for a couple weeks now, but these are Loquat pre-stained and cochineal. This one's frozen. It got too far to the back of the fridge. Anyway, I'm going to defrost this, but they are non-mordanted fabric, just uh, soaked in the dye baths so that they can impart their color onto another fiber and make a resist of the leaves in between. So we're going to try to do that uh, in two colors. I'm using alum mordanted silk because protein fibers really like these two uh, different dyes. So I thought it would be a good chance for success. So we'll be doing that today. Okay, here's our first silk base for our dye blanket experiment. I'm going to do this one in loquat. Uh, I'm also going to do one with a different kind of leaf if I have any more sycamore leaves that haven't um, given up a ghost overnight. And then I'll also do one on oak gall because I have the silk already mordanted just to see what happens. So this is number one and it's going to get a loquat dye blanket over the top and I will show you that when it's on. Okay, here's the loquat dye blanket. I'm going to plastic over the top. Roll it on the dowel, and I think we'll steam it for at least 60 minutes because that's generally how long you would dye something to like get the color into the fiber. So I'm going to say we'll steam it for 60 minutes because I can't think of why longer than that would be better, and I don't think shorter would either. So we're going to go with that. I will show you what the cochineal and uh, whatever else I make to go in this test look like. Okay, this will be dye blanket number two. We are going to use low quad on this one again, but it's on oak gall. So that's how I'll be able to tell them apart is if it's going to be orange, it'll be eucalyptus. If it's oak gall, it will be the cottonwood. If it's uh, the alum mordant. So we'll see how each one does. Okay, this will be our cochineal uh, resist print here with a cochineal dye blanket over the top. And then I'm kind of just going to try and use up the rest of it because I don't want to have them in my fridge anymore. It's been two weeks and my husband's been very tolerant. Okay, uh, let me get these wrapped up. We'll get them steaming and then we'll take a look. Reference, this is what it looks like with its dye blanket on top and its plastic. And then I start rolling from this in and I keep pulling it towards me to keep the fabric taut as I'm doing it. I'm realizing that I'm not sure if I've ever told you what exactly I was doing during that time, uh, but that's what I'm doing, and I'm going to do it to a few more of these before we're ready to roll. Okay, I had enough to do two of each on silk, and I did one on a cellulose fiber, meaning cotton, just to see what would happen. That was done in oak gall. So we'll see what happens. We'll let these go for, I think, an hour. I just, I don't see any reason to do it longer than that. Okay, it has been about an hour for our colored dye blankets. So we're going to take these out, let them cool for a bit, and see how we did and if our assumptions were correct. That looks to be a different color, but we are looking at the dye blanket, which is already pink, as was this one. Well, we will hope that the silk up took something. Uh oh. Eh. Uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> I have no idea if any of that worked. Oh boy, this will be fun. Well, hello everyone. These are admittedly still pretty hot, but I have uh, low patience, so I'm going to open them anyway. But anyway, these are our dye blanket attempts, and I will probably start with the one that looks like it might have been the least successful. I don't know, but I think I'm going to start with that one, and I'm going to do the time lapse -y thing so we don't spend 45 minutes listening to me on pluck leaves off of this, which I've realized is primary uh, time consumer on these videos. So I'm going to unwind this guy in rapid time. <laughs>
wasn't a failure. Color got in there from that low quat. And this is onto the alum mordanted silk. And if that fun, crazy yellow stays, we're going to be printing cottonwoods like the Dickens. And it looks like the low quat um, dye blanket stayed the same. So we can just use that for any printing we want to really and just throw an iron dye blanket over the top of that. Alrighty, uh, I'm going to disappear and do uh, this one I think is onto cotton, but it also looks like it reacted. So I guess we're, I'll just, I'll do this one next and speed it up. <laughs> wild and look at the dye blanket that's so fun looks like weird feathers or something very here for that you could embroider feathers over it and make that very feathery i really hope some of this color stays the cochineal might just fall right out because this has not been mordanted at all and there's not a ton of tannins necessarily in cochineal uh whereas the this part is one mordanted two uh, like the loquat, for instance, it stays in the fabric because there's a ton of tannins in the fab in the actual dye. So it works a little differently, but I hope that stays. That's so fun. Okay, I'm going to do another one. <laughs> Wow, I, I, I hope the color stays. <laughs> Holy flip. And then look at how beautiful the dye blanket is. This one I don't expect to stay. Now, interesting, this last piece down here, I was careful to use a doubled over dye blanket. So the print on the dye blanket is a little less crisp, as you can see. But look at how much color, more color fell out of it. It's literally double the color because I had double the amount of dye blanket over it. We can use that science in some way. I don't know that I wanted to create zebra fruit striped gum, but if you wanted to, here's how. Uh, cottonwood, uh, silk, alum mordant, and um, yeah, and uh, dye blankets. With the bugs. It's the bugs again. Bugs and leaves, people. Fruit stripe gum out of bugs and leaves. It's, it, the world makes no sense to me anymore. What am I even doing here? All right. Uh, okay. Uh, let's do the, let's do the last sulk. <laughs>
another very cool one. And because the eucalyptus is very rich in tannins, it actually probably will stay stuck to the fiber as well as the loquat uh, initial dye because it's just that kind of stuff. So it probably steamed it into there. Well, I'm amazed. Okay, let's do our last one, which is the one that I printed onto cotton as just a test to see if it would even uh, do the dye blanket thing onto cotton. So we'll unwrap this one last. <laughs> lesson as to why the protein fibers just don't like this as much. Uh, this was mordanted in alum, I believe. But anyway, it might have been oak gall tannin. I think it's oak gall. But either way, it, there wasn't enough tannin in this to react, whereas the other ones had very tannin-rich leaves that would use the loquat at least. They had tannin-rich leaves that could block for it. Uh, so anyway, I think that that proves that this works best on silk. One. Two, you can make rainbow fruit, fruit stripe gum out of bugs. This looks just like a moth. There's a moth that looks just like this. You could make a costume to be this moth. If anyone remembers what the moth is, please leave it in the comments. Uh, these, if they, unless they come out really fantastic, I'll just turn them into iron dye blankets. And these I'll just literally print right onto because they're just covered in loquat, which is ready to react. So thank you so much. I will see you in a bit when these are all laundered and dried. And welcome to our magnificent dye blanket results. Now, remember that these two types of silk I did in eucalyptus, and those were oak gall mordanted silk. So we know that the oak gall will bond with cochineal and loquat, because we've dyed with both of those before. But it looks like there wasn't a lot of color for it to go in. Where there is a lot of color, it's got some nice contrast, but it could use more contrast. Now, when we get into the alum mordanted fiber, it certainly took up a lot more color from what I'm realizing is probably not a cottonwood tree. I think that may have been misidentified. I believe it is some, a, something called a Chinese flame tree which is actually known in China to give greenish yellow dyes, which makes sense because these are very greeny yellow. So the interesting thing about this one is that this uh, portion of the roll had a folded over, like doubled over piece of cochineal dye blanket. So it literally had double the amount of cochineal available to it to pull through the fabric. This one with half as much cochineal available, half as much color science right there in our front of our very own eyes but i was absolutely obsessed with this and now that we know that the more cochineal you can get into your dye blanket the better i am currently pre-soaking a bunch of cotton batting like you would use between layers of quilts because that should hold a lot of dye you would think and i wanted to show you the dye blankets for these because these are unmordanted fabric and they do have some kind of pretty prints on here. They're certainly interesting. A little harder to see them when they're not wet, but there are some kind of hidden prints on there. But because there is no mordant in this fabric, only the natural mordant of the tannins that you're dying with, like this loquat, took a little bit of tannin into it from the leaves that it was pressed to. But generally these dye blankets are just gonna spit out their color, give it up, and be done. 
and you can reuse them over and over and over again if you only want a little bit of dye, but if you want to get really dark pinks, you will want to add a thicker dye blanket, so either a flannel, or in the case we're going to try, a uh, cotton batting, because that's what I had that was thicker than this, and I didn't have to go buy flannel. So we're going to try that. Um, I am wondering if having more available cochineal would have helped the oak gall tannin one, but I still think that alum is probably the way to go. So we may be alum mordanting some more silk shortly. Anyway, thank you for coming on this magnificent dye experiment. I don't know if success could be any better than that. We learned stuff. We made rainbow ruby maple moth or rosy maple moth colored fabric. I mean, that's a win. Thank you for coming on this dye experiment. If you'd give me a like or subscribe or let me know which one is your favorite. I especially like this kind of tealy blue green that's coming up. Let me know which one is your favorite. And I hope to see you in the next experiment. Thank you so much to my patrons who are keeping me alive through this process. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!